us for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. We would ask that you be glorified in us this day. Transform us, O oh Lord. We would ask for traveling mercies on our lives, in our days. We ask for our family members that you would touch them with your Holy Spirit. Bring, bring transformation to us and through us. And we give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Oops. Amen. So good morning, all. We're uh, we're into uh, Luke 23. We're in New Living Translation. We need to drop that down. Yep, there you go, or whatever it is. So just as backstory here, um, we find out that the Lord Jesus has just been through three trials, um, one in front of the former high priest, one in front of the high priest, and one in front of the Sanhedrin. We find that these trials are illegal and immoral because they have uh, they have no legal uh, authority the way they did them. Numerous times they break their own law to make sure that Christ gets crucified. So he's been before the high priest, the former high priest. He's been before the current high priest. He's been before the, the Sanhedrin. But remember that the Jews at this point are under Roman occupation. So the Roman occupation does not allow crucifixion by anybody but Romans. Um, it doesn't allow any any uh, judicial uh, capital punishment by anybody but um, but the Romans. And the Romans loved having that much power over the people because it gave them power. Oh. So the uh, and when they took the power of life and death from the Jews, they um, they literally wept over it because they didn't like, they liked having control over life and death. But at the same time, we see Stephen, a few chapters later in Acts, um, stoned to death for proclaiming Jesus. So that wasn't a judicial stoning, that was just a mob stoning. And that was probably okay. <laughs> like, ah, uh, like yeah. the whole thing just makes you ill. Could have been, but, yeah. Well, his, uh, uh, the the uh, fact that the Jews um, lost the right to capital punishment fulfills scripture back in Genesis, where the, it was prophesied that the scepter, the ruling authority, will not depart from Judah until the Messiah appears. That's right. Of course, this is happening when Jesus is alive, walking the work, earth. The, the Jewish authorities are not recognizing him, so they think the scepter has departed without the Messiah present, hence the wailing and moaning about it. There you go. Um, and there's other people who think that the scepter, the scepter scripture is again fulfilled when the temple is taken down in 70 AD. So the, the Jewish leadership knows that verse and all of a sudden it's gone. Right. Okay. Nope. That takes us to Luke 23. We're in New Living Translation. Yep. Um, blessings to you who are with us or soon to be with us. Yep. And here we go. So, uh, yeah, in LT 23, verse 1. Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilate. Now, this just happened after uh, they, uh, they say that he said that he's the son of God. Yeah. He said that they said he was the son of God. And they and said, anyway, that's enough to convict him. That's enough to convict him. But then, you can't be convicted by your own testimony in right. Jewish law. <laughs> right, yeah. So um, so here we have this parade going on from, from the council chambers of the Jewish leadership to Pilate's um, house, uh, to Pilate's, uh, to the well, presence going, of Pilate. Yeah, yeah, well, they're going... Um, Right to uh, the well, he was at the Antonius Fortress, I believe, that he was actually tried, mm -hmm. um, which is just northwest of the Temple Mount. That's right. Um, that was the uh, seat of authority, it was like a, an armory for yep. the Romans at the time. Um, so yeah, they began to state their case. This man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government and by claiming he is the Messiah, a king. They're trying to turn this obviously into a political uh, issue by calling him king. Um, 
and that's a threat, obviously, to um, Roman authority. And that's how they're trying to drag Pontius Pilate and the Romans into this. That's right. Into this trial. It's really pretty well framed. That there's a couple of things that the Romans don't care about. The fact that there's a conflict between Jewish leadership, they don't care. No, they don't care. But they do care when somebody else claims to be king, because that cuts across Rome, and when somebody else tells them not to pay taxes. But Jesus never told them not to pay taxes. Just the fact, Jesus, yeah. If it's Caesar's, give it to Caesar. If it's God, give it to God. And so you think, you know, it's it's a half-truth. It's a eighth of a truth. It's a twentieth of a truth, whatever. Yes, he is. But he's not trying to lead. The fact that he's leading people astray doesn't matter to the Romans. No. It matters to the Romans that Jesus is the Christ. No, it does matter to the Romans that Jesus is king. Yep. And so in that little piece, they have an argument before the Romans. Yeah, that's something that's real leverage that could get back to Rome. If Rome finds out their pro procurator uh, allowed somebody uh, to claim to be king within their territory, that's real friction. Yeah, uh, they, there you go. They, uh, under the excuse of maintaining Pax Romana, the Roman peace, which go. is really just <laughs> trying to keep a terror. lid on. Yeah, a brought about by terror. Uh, so that's, it, that's it, it's it's fascinating are. that that this. Okay, so, so we're in Holy Week. They got tons of stuff to do because they're the ruling council. They got all these plans to do, and they compile. In almost in route, or they had pre-planned this. When Judas betrays him, we'll go to, we'll go to Pilate with this argument, because, you know, from from this short walking distance to get a whole council to agree together on the charges is pretty impressive. So they're either already ready, or they have this quick huddle meeting as they're marching Jesus from one place to where Pilate is. Mm -hmm. Okay. On to uh, verse three. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied as he did to the Sanhedrin. You have said it as if to say, we, today we'd say, you uh, you said it. Out of your mouth. <laughs> it's almost you know, the colloquial we say, you yeah. you said it almost. Like, 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 like you say. Like, like you said. He, it's you what, know, what like you he said. said. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. What you said. So no. are you the king of the Jews? Now, let me set the stage for this. Jesus dies early in the morning on, on Passover, um, and the trials well, have been happening Jesus. overnight, which is illegal, of course. And they're waking, and they're in front of Pilate early, early in the morning on the day that Christ is crucified. So, um, but uh, but the Jews are insistent upon this, and they drag. You know, Jesus into the Pilate's presence, and Pilate said, "Well, are you the King of the Jews?" Yeah. It's really an insightful question because if if he says that he's King of the Jews, then that's that's kind of enough to convict him. Uh, he could be a crazy person, and you don't want crazy people getting killed. But hmm. and Jesus flips it back at him, mm -hmm. and Jesus says, "That's what you say. You said it. It comes out of your mouth." Mm. <laughs> right, and. And how amazing that conversation is when right. when a pagan despicable person calls Jesus king and Jesus says that's what you said mm -hmm. I mean it's on it cuts out of your mouth that we say mm -hmm. this yeah yeah it, it really puts them on the spot in judgment day to say you know you confess that after all you admitted it <laughs> that's a tough go. place to be coming not, up not a good yeah. place to be Okay. Yeah, but, you know, uh, in fairness to Pilate, he <laughs> did make effort after effort to um, get Jesus off his plate, so to speak. Um, apparently seven attempts. I, I had never thought about it that way. Between actions and words, the commentator we were listening to said seven different ways he tried to scurry around this crucifying Jesus. Right. Including, I mean, his wife had a dream mm -hmm. and his wife apparently became Christian for sure. There's some question as to whether or not he did, yeah. but his wife said, have nothing to do with this man. That's right. And sure enough, led to his downfall. Um, but ultimately, yeah, he, uh, the last act of Pontius Pilate was to wash his hands of this. So you take him, I'm, I'm releasing myself from this decision. 
<laughs> and we get that expression today. I'm washing my hands of this. Amen. And that that trial. So in this, you know, we don't have we may not have this whole conversation in verse three. I mean, this may have been um, are you the king of the Jews? You say that I am. And then Pilate turns to the priest and the crowd. I find nothing wrong with this man. Right. So um, so maybe there was more in this conversation than these these four words. You said it. But the um, the conversation with the Lord Jesus was enough for Pilate, this most powerful man in the whole area, to say, I find nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And again, though, and his whole his whole objective is to try to keep the peace here imagine christmas morning somebody uh, some uh, some folks from a local uh, a religious sect show up on your doorstep and say we're going to kill this guy yeah basically he read through it obviously uh and uh, you can imagine with all the tension and pressure of the holiday and uh, the whole thing is now placed in a political context you're on the spot you don't want anything to do with it i mean it's really uh, a difficult per, a place for everybody to be. Anyway, continuing with verse five. Uh, then they became insistent. They would not take no for an answer. But he is causing riots by teaching people wherever he goes all over Judea from Galilee to Jerusalem. Okay. So the more that Pilate resists them, the more adamant that they become. And the fact that he's causing riots. Well, any of the riots that happened happened because the people reacted to what Jesus said, not because Jesus said, let's go rioting. <laughs> I mean, right. that's it's not that his his disciples are proclaiming Christ and there's some people, but not riots, you know, that's, that's just so. So the the uh, they've tried they're tr going to try a new charge. He's bringing sedition wherever he goes. He's bringing rebellion wherever he goes. He's making he's making the days unsafe. Mm. And um, so they, they've got away from their um, their pre pre planned attack on Jesus, their legal terror, and they they now just you can hear the tone of their voice rise. This yeah. is this is uh, you're not getting it. You got to kill this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Pilate fixates on the word Galilean <laughs> in verse six. Oh, he is he a Galilean? Pilate asked. Uh, when they said that he was, Pilate sent him to Herod Antipas because Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction and Herod happened to be in Jerusalem at that time because of the holiday. That's right. So everybody shows up at Jerusalem for Passover, whether or not you have Jewish connection, it is it's a holiday. It's a, I mean, um, and and sometimes these guys actually have Jewish connections, but let's not push mm -hmm. that too far. Okay. okay. So so again, we're early in the morning. We've gone to Pilate. Pilate says, "Oh, he's from Galilee. That puts him under this guy's jurisdiction. Send him over there." So they go marching from 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 the Pilate place across the street it's not we're not talking hours of march here we're talking minutes of march yeah and then go ahead yeah picking up an eight herod was delighted at the opportunity to see jesus because he had heard about him and had been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle okay so <laughs> herod's pleased that this gets dumped on his plate at least momentarily because he wants to see the show he wants to see, right he's looking you for know, a magic. pull a rabbit out of the hat Make somebody's arm grow. What do you got here, Jesus? Right. Yep. <laughs> Verse nine. Uh, he asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to answer him. Uh, very interesting because uh, you know, Jesus is well aware of who Herod is, what his history is. Uh, yes. Executing John the Baptist. Yeah. Uh, was really way over the line. Needless mm -hmm. to say, among so many other atrocities. Yeah. And he just wasn't going to engage this guy. Uh, in in conversation but he also wasn't going to engage this guy on herod's terms right jesus is in charge of everything here even though he's bound whipped um carted from place to place he he is lord yeah so yeah 
Uh, so yeah, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the leading priests and teachers of religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Which doesn't help your case before a major government official. Screaming out at a government official, your case does not help your case. Right. Verse 11, then Herod and his soldiers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. And parenthetically, verse 12, Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies before, became friends over this incident that day. Okay, so Herod's reaction is that Jesus isn't reacting. Yeah. So he and his soldiers start to mock him, scream at him, shout abuse at him. Hmm. Um, because he's not acknowledging, I am the great Herod, and you don't, you're not, so they mock him, and then they doubly mock him by putting a purple, uh, I've always thought about it as purple, a purple robe on him, and carting him back, the, um, the, the irony of, uh, of a royal robe on Christ, yeah. it's pretty amazing, mm. um, are you the king of the Jews? Doesn't answer him. And they so they then they then they royally robe him. I mean, it, it just it's it, they're fulfilling they're fulfilling the um the kingship of Jesus without meaning to it all. Instead, they mean it to be mocking, but right. Yeah, and yet because there was this exchange between Pilate and Herod, mm -hmm. it was enough for them to create essentially a, a renewed relationship. Each recognized the other as having a territorial authority. Yes. And by that, uh, they became friends. At least they were not, it, it weren't in a position before they might have been hostile to one another to prove who was really has the upper hand in, in different areas. Mm -hmm. And this uh, brought them together essentially on the same plane and um, kind of smoothed things over for a while anyway. Yes. Good morning. Welcome with us. Hello. <laughs> verse 13, then Pilate, we're, uh, we're verse 13 of chapter 23 of Luke. Um, then uh, Pilate called together the leading priests and other religious leaders, along with the people, and announced his verdict. So this is Pilate's official verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence and find him innocent, okay? He declares Jesus innocent. This and is again, Pontius Pilate. Again. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Herod uh, came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. So now you've got two verdicts of innocence. Right. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty. So I will have him flogged and then I will release him. Which is an awful thing to do. I'm sure that this guy is innocent I'm just going to beat him to a pulp, and that should satisfy him. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was no way you, to take. This wasn't a spanking. This was true. a flogging that a lot of people just didn't survive. That's right. And I got to confess, I, I, uh, I, my faith wavered a little bit when I realized he went from this flogging of a cat of nine tails forty plus times because the Romans were doing it. Right. They always want to make sure they had at least forty strikes in there. You multiply nine times uh, 40, and you get, you're up in the hundreds of strokes, 360 plus um, lacerations on his back. One doctor, and, and face and one medical doctor uh, estimated that uh, it would have taken thousands, some, I think the number was 2,000, it was at least 2,000 and maybe 6,000 stitches yes. to close all the wounds on Jesus' back. Now, to think that he could then pick up a, a patebulum, the cross beam of the cross, and carry that from that fortress to uh, Golgotha. I said to myself, "Wait a minute, you know, <laughs> that's that's not humanly possible." But then the scriptures came to my rescue with Simon of Cyrene, yeah. who the Romans impressed. See, they, they, he he was not making it. He was not going to make it without help. And and, and they Romans don't want him to die him. in the streets. Romans impressed Simon to um, yeah, they didn't want him to die in the streets. They want to, him die. They to want him, him dead Calvary. on the cross. They want yeah. him because every time, if they don't make it to the cross, the Roman 
the Roman authority is a bit challenged. What do you mean he died before he got on the cross? Yeah. We want him on the cross. Yeah. We want to say Rome is king. Yeah. Rome is king. He's got to die. So we'll get Simon and we'll drag him along. And his uh, sons. And his and his sons watching. And his sons became believers too. So, yeah. um, so anyway, yeah. So this was not a, a light undertaking. This flogging was very serious business. That's right. Um, I think uh, Mel Gibson's portrayal of it was close to accurate. Yeah, if it wasn't accurate per se, it gave you a, a real sense of the intensity of it, That's just right. how bad it was. Well, when we did that, we I took a group to the theater and we uh, we talked about it afterwards. Like they were trying to clear the theater out. I said, "Give me five more minutes." Mm, okay, uh, I, I'm a pastor. Give me five more minutes. And we talked about the brutality of it, but how they got it close to right. Mm. It was. Um, the, the 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 passage tells us he was beaten beyond recognition. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's right. That you couldn't even. Didn't even so it wasn't just his back. No, the 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 cat went around the front too and ripped, no. and then up and down because you don't want to leave a, a place unscarred. And then no. so ah yeah, so he's that, not guilty, but I'll have him flogged, and that should satisfy. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. And the crowd roared, yeah. the crowd roared, kill him and release Barabbas to us. Yeah, that was amazing. You can imagine, too, that he did humiliate that Roman cohort when they took him from from Gethsemane. Yes. So they probably had a special vengeance for him when it came to that flogging. That's right. But it was especially brutal. Um, verse 18. Uh, then a mighty roar, uh, roar arose from the crowd, and with one voice they shouted, kill him, and release Bar Barabbas to us. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus. They kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Okay, so here we have a, uh, a murderer, um, probably a zealot. And the, the custom of the Jews of the day was to release one prisoner. Um, yeah, we, we do presidential pardons now, um, kind, of, kind of the same. Yeah, no, not quite the same, kind of the same. And so to appease the local body, they would release one prisoner. That sounds like a weird, um, a, a weird connection to make with your people that you'll send one dangerous criminal back into their midst <laughs> to appease them it, like argh, argh. Yeah. <laughs> like everything feels like ah yeah. okay but they kept shouting crucify him give us crucify. barabbas yeah so that's um yeah barabbas was uh, an insurrectionist people were looking to overthrow rome yeah. they preferred and uh, jesus had failed them in that role yeah from from many points of view that I'll say that, but this crowd was inspired. Uh, inspired, they were stoked <laughs> by uh, the uh, Jewish authority. That's anyway, they, they, that was a, that was a a uh, drummed up uh, a crowd that, uh, you know, like any mob, once it gets rolling, it, it's it gets uh, furious. And That's right. Here we so here, it. here we've had a whole. Okay, <laughs> the past twenty four hours. We're not even twenty four hours. The past twenty four hours. We've had these final teachings of Jesus. We've had the other Lord's Prayer in, in John 17, uh, I think 17. Um, we've had the, the trip to the Gethsemane. We've had the prayer time. We've had the soldiers coming to grab him, with Judas, Judas betraying him. We have um, uh, three Jewish trials. We have three Roman trials. <laughs> and we're... We're just after sunrise. I mean, um, they beat him, you know, if, if I understand the time right, uh, he went to the cross about nine o'clock in the morning, mm. nine to 12. And from 12 to three, the whole area was dark. And then and then he was taken down from the cross and put in the tomb before before official dark. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so we'll get to that. We, we'll get to that. Okay, we'll go over it again for sure. We will. But just the cr the crushing details of this mm -hmm. is just uh, mind boggling. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you that you endured trials for us, that you knew from the beginning that that our sin needed paying for, 
We thank you, O oh Lord, for going to the cross and going through all this humiliation leading to the cross and the resurrection and the payment for, for my sin and for ours. Transform me, O oh Lord, so I can radiate your goodness and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord, for, again, your, uh, the history that comes forth from this, that is the truth that brings together the, the whole purpose of our being, uh, that uh, uh, certainly certifies as much as humanly possible how, how much you loved your creation, that you would do this to redeem it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's just staggering and we thank you for the efforts of your passion we yes. pray for your uh, for your uh, direction yes. that we might lead lives that glorify you in your precious name yeshua amen amen blessings to you all